Well, not being one of the most anticipated or celebrated events of the year, Microsoft Build is still an important one. As an event that caters to developers on Windows, and Windows still being the most popular desktop operating system, the things announced here definitely carry some weight. While it is a three-day event that you can actually live stream the entire thing, yeah, seriously, uh, if you want that to go look at it real quick because you have three days to spare, uh, click the link below and uh, you can find that. Uh, but I figured I would just do a quick condensed video uh, for you guys, just of the most important things that were announced. First up, there is an anniversary update now coming um, that supposedly is a big update. Uh, some of the things that's in it, though, is universal apps for all devices that includes Xbox, Windows Phone, and uh, regular desktop. Uh, also, it's going to allow biometrics, which is like the fingerprint scanners and the Windows Hello, like face scanning stuff. Uh, to actually be able to be used by all developers instead of just by Windows itself, which means you're going to see a lot of cool things come out of that from individual developers even further down the road. The anniversary update will also bring Windows Inc., which is kind of cool. One of the things they showed that Windows Inc. can do is when you write a word, Cortana can actually uh, understand it in a contextual sense. So for example, if you wrote tomorrow, it would highlight as blue, and then you could use it to set reminders for literally tomorrow. Now we've seen this before, obviously with typed words, but this is kind of a neat concept to add it to uh, written words. A set of rulers have been introduced that you can kind of maneuver around with one finger, and if you use two fingers, you can actually rotate. Uh, you can then use this along with the pen to draw straighter lines, to actually uh, line things up in PowerPoint, uh, and it's just kind of a neat little tool that even Adobe is starting to adopt in their apps for Windows. Another thing they showed was the ability to draw a line on a map and have it actually calculate the distance and then straighten that line out uh, to make almost a trail. Other than that, you can also draw words on the map as well and when you do uh, maneuver into like a 3D view it'll actually keep them uh, with their elevation as well. Also crossing out sentences or even entire paragraphs in Microsoft Word will actually delete them. Uh, you can also use the highlighter and instead of it just kind of following where your pen went it'll actually straighten it out and kind of line it up with the text. All of this is again just it, trying to take something like drawing uh, and making it a little more integrated with what's actually happening on the screen instead of it just kind of being an overlay, um, which I have to admit is kind of a clever way to go. Microsoft is also pushing their universal apps, which I think is a great idea because it is one of the things that with such a huge desktop ecosystem at their disposal can help them with all of their other ecosystems. Now these universal apps are not new, but they're kind of pushing them out now. Um, they've even released a converter that helps developers convert their existing Windows 32 or .NET apps into these new universal apps. They announced a few things for Xbox as well. Uh, Xbox is going to have a single store that'll work for Windows, Windows Phone, and Xbox, which of course makes sense considering the universal app thing I just mentioned. Uh, also Cortana is coming to Xbox, and they're actually gonna build in some new features that apparently uh, people have been requesting, like background music, the ability to play music while you're playing a game. Uh, that's not gonna get released yet, but more features like that and that feature itself will be talked about and released closer to E3. In addition to this, they also announced an Xbox dev mode, uh, which is just an easier way of converting your Xbox into a developer kit. Uh, this allows video game developers to actually use their retail Xbox to test their games and do whatever else they need to do. Now, obviously not a big thing for you and I, but a big deal for Xbox developers. HoloLens was briefly mentioned and demonstrated. Um, we're kind of getting used to seeing it. Uh, but the cool thing that was announced was that they have developer kits now that anyone can go buy. They do cost $3,000, but they are available now uh, and kind of give you an idea of what exactly the HoloLens is all about. So now some of the coolest things that were actually announced in the keynote uh, have to do with Cortana and bots. So bots are like apps, but they can communicate with you in a conversational way through text. So the idea here is, for example, there would be a Domino's bot. Uh, and if you wanted to order a pizza, you would just tell the bot, hey, what's up? Boom, it would respond. You'd say slash order, uh, and it would order your favorite pizza. It already knows where your location is, everything else, because you've set it up. Now, it might seem simple, but it could actually have a pretty cool 
impact in the way that we do certain things and interact with certain apps. Uh, Microsoft is also adding a lot more features to Cortana uh, to make her a little more contextually aware, but essentially the idea being that they want Cortana to be more of your personal assistant, and then she can hand you off, uh, depending on what it is you need, uh, to specific bots to get it done. So if you start talking to Cortana about a travel that you're about to do, she might redirect you to the Hilton bot and the Hilton bot would help you then book a room uh, and then that would come back to Cortana. You could then also need a flight. She'll transfer you off to the flight bot. When you're done with that, you come back to Cortana and so on and so forth. Now you can see as these things get smarter or better, uh, how this could actually be beneficial and useful. An example of this would be telling Cortana to uh, send Ben the PowerPoint that I was working on last night. Cortana would know because she's always monitoring the things you're doing, what PowerPoint it was that you were working on last night. She'd know your contacts, so she'd know who Ben was and his email address, and she'd have access to your email, so she could quickly shoot off that email to Ben. Now, in order to make Cortana a little smarter, they need to have her be a little bit more integrated with your communications beyond just your email. So, it makes sense. They added a whole new version of Skype with Cortana integrated into it. Cortana will automatically highlight text within your conversations to try to give more context to it. For example, if you mention a company's name in a chat in Skype, she'll highlight it and link it out to a Microsoft card uh, giving information about the company. She can also private message you on the side within uh, your Skype chats and be the liaison, like we mentioned before, between you and a bunch of bots. So for example, she might say something like, the Cups and Cakes bot just sent me a message. They have a package and would like to know your location for delivery. Should I share it? You could then say yes, and it would send your current location to that bot, and then delivery would proceed. Cortana will also monitor your chats and offer info when she thinks it's necessary. So for example, if you're talking about a trip to say Dublin, she might automatically say, would you like to talk to the Weston bot so you can book a room like I mentioned before. She also knows who you talk to the most often. So if you are going on that trip to Dublin, she'll know which of your friends lives in Dublin and then automatically prepare a message for you with the dates of your trip, letting them know that you're going to be staying during that time and would like to catch up. Then you can say, sure, and send that message off automatically. All of this intelligence is not gonna be just limited to chat. They're also trying to bring it in real time to your videos as well. Now developers can access this Skype bot SDK right now and consumers can actually start downloading and installing these bots right now as well on their Windows app, their iOS, and their Android apps. So there you go guys, quick overview of everything super important that was announced at the Microsoft Build keynote. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I think that the bot thing is kind of interesting to watch at least. Uh, we'll see how well it's integrated and how well it does and how many developers actually pick it up and start using it, but it's at least innovative. I have to give them that. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below about that and also about what you think about this video as well. I'm starting to do these news videos. You guys seem to like them, but please let me know if you want me to keep doing them. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and also, please follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to be more active on there and would love to chat with you guys. Uh, it's at the unlocker with the E missing in the word unlocker. As always, thanks for watching.